Hi, I'm Patrick, a watercolour artist from Sydney, Australia. And as I'm posting this, it is the middle of winter here in July. And I've just come back from a few days up in the snow where we had beautiful weather, great conditions. And I painted a few snowscapes, which I don't do very often. I hope you enjoy this painting. And if you do, then please subscribe to this channel or follow me on any of the other social media outlets that I have down below in the description where I also list out the colours I've used for this painting. Thanks for watching. I uh, start off with wetting the top up of the page and dropping in some warm yellow for the rising sun. And then I'll add in cobalt blue for the sky, making sure that the top of the page is stronger. And then I add a bit more water as I come down the page. And then just gently let it touch the yellow so that it doesn't turn into green. So don't rub it, don't brush the blue into the yellow that definitely turns into green if it just runs slightly into each other it should be okay and I'm just going to dry that horizon line there so that I can continue to paint for the snow I'm using a warm pink with just a tiny bit of um, alizarin crimson or quinacridone rose in my instance and a little bit of raw sienna that gives it a really warm pinkish kind of glow the snow always reflects the sky or the light that's around it, it's rarely ever just white. So you can be a bit creative when you paint snow. Once that settles, I'm going to add a little bit of raw sienna over the top just to give it a bit of warmth where the sun hits the snow fields. Now I'm going to go in with a bit of purple, a stronger color just for those background hills they need to recede a little bit and now I'll let that dry as you could see and I've mixed my mid value which is a stronger bluish purple in this instance I've used a bit of indigo uh, and some alizarin crimson and then I paint in the middle ground and I add some more ultramarine to it or a nice cool blue just to get a bit of variation. These hills are in the shade, so the sun rises behind them, so they can be fairly dark. But I want to reserve a little bit of darkness for some highlights later on, just so I don't go all the way to 10 with this color. That's probably about a six or a seven in terms of the darkness. And then I'll just fill in my shadow areas of the snow. Pick up some more blue to add more of that cool shadow there in front of the house. And then I wash it down a little bit, so I water it down uh, so I have a lighter blue, so not all the shadows are the same strength. And then a bit more darker streaks here and there while it's still wet so that it gives me these soft gradations. And then I decide that there's a bit of a hill there in the foreground. The sun will come in from the top right corner. So everything will cast a bit of a shadow towards the left. Now it's time to put in that roof. And I'm using the same blue color as for the shadows. And with snow paintings, that's great. You can use only very few colors to achieve uh, good painting, some blue, some warmer colors. Here I'm lifting out a little bit of that shadow. I want to make sure that I preserve enough of my whites. Here we've got a bit of a path leading up to the house and that will cast a shadow. So I'm strengthening that a bit and then while the other shadows are still wet, I also darken them just a little bit just to get a bit more variation there. And here are some more tracks that will connect up with the main road. And then some shadows from footsteps or other indentations in the snow just to give it some texture in the foreground. I'll let that dry as well. And then I'll continue with the house. That side will catch quite a bit of the light. So I'm not going to make that as dark, even though it looks darker now, but it'll dry off a little bit lighter and maybe I'll lift out some of that paint again. So we have some contrast between the front facing side of the house and then the side of the house, which I just dropped in a little bit more pigment. So 
it really looks like there's a shadow side there. And then it's time for the tree lines. And for that I've mixed up more brown, reddish looking color. It's burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson in there. And then I just let my brush do all of the work. Just very loose, just really dab in some of that tree line. In terms of values, this is also a quite strong mid value. Uh, maybe a little bit darker than the background hill, just so that we get some depth going from the back to the front. The colours become more intense as they get closer. I changed my brush here to a fine liner. So I can paint some branches and tree trunks sticking out of the top. I also make sure that I don't have too many repetitive patterns in there so that there is always a bit of variations, shorter, longer, thicker, thinner trees, just to keep it interesting. And then there are some trees at the top of this distant hill as well that defines that more. Now I pick up some darker pigment to give this road in the front a bit more definition. The shadows from the tracks and ridges in the road that will help leading the eye into the middle of the painting. And there are some trees on that shadow hill as well and they will be darker again because they don't get any sunlight and they're also a little bit closer so I'm almost at black now with my indigo and raw umber mix. A few more bushes and shrubs on that far distant hill just to create some texture. While I've got a stronger mix on my palette I add some shadows to those trees behind the house on that ridge, get a bit of depth in there, a bit of volume, making sure that there are shadow parts and lighter parts. And then I move into the foreground tree, which I paint with a dry brush technique, so that's very thick paint with very little water, and then just scratch the side of my brush over the paper to create texture here. The tree trunks, they're thin trees, so they're not they're more like a shrub, I guess. And then, like in the background tree, you have some branches sticking out. It is winter. A lot of trees have lost their leaves, even in Australia. And now I want to add a bit more definition to that house in the distance. It disappears a little bit. So I'm going to add a shadow line under the roof and strengthen the shadow on the side of the house and add a couple of windows in there which in hindsight I'm not really too fond of but you know they're there so you live and you learn that's what painting is all about I don't paint masterpieces that need to be sold or go into a gallery this is my sketchbook I'm learning with every painting I'm trying to do something different or something new or solidify a technique that I've learned here I'm mostly experimenting with the light, how the light comes over the mountains, the sunlight, and illuminates the snow on the left side of the painting and casts a lot of shadows. I don't think I got it quite right, but it's quite enjoyable. And I added some fence posts that weren't there, but I felt there was not enough definition on that track leading in from the left. A fence posts will always help you guide the eye into a painting and they cast some shadows as well and that gives it more of a 3D feeling and then the same with the path leading up to the house that was something missing there for me so I added some subtle fence posts and that's the painting almost done once it was dry I realized that that front bush didn't stand out enough so white gouache to the rescue it is a winter landscape so you have all of the freedom to add white gouache over the top so i just added some snowflakes over the branches and i like 
a bit of splatter at the end of every painting to red texture and as you can see the gouache is so thick I can't get it off my paintbrush but so add a bit more water and then try a bigger paintbrush as well um, that didn't work either so I resorted to the toothbrush which is always a fail safe to use splatters they're quite fine but quite intense so same for the for that bush just to add a little bit more snow right at the end I popped in some skis that were sitting outside the lodge I wanted to tell some stories so and that's my snow painting hope you enjoyed that one thanks for watching